Hey guys, even here, so in this video we have a couple of very interesting stories, but we'll start with this one. So Phil Heath finally puts the rumors to rest, now we know what exactly is he gonna be doing this year, as far as Mr. Olympia, as far as competition, so let me show you, let's hear what Phil has to say actually. As you know, the Olympia is uh, in December 16th and 17th, and it's back in Las Vegas. And I hit up Jake Wood and Dan Solomon, and we put our heads together on how I could be a part of that event. So with all that said, I'm actually this year in Las Vegas going to be commentating the event. As you guys know, the Olympia means the world to me. It's the pinnacle of bodybuilding. And I cannot wait to see you guys in Las Vegas come December. Peace. Yep, so that's it. Phil Heath is going to be actually commentating the Mr. Olympia and that's about it. No competitions this year. Nothing like that. Kind of disappointing, really. Especially considering the way he looks right now in this very video where he announces this and also in many videos, photos, all kinds of bodybuilding updates that I made videos about that really looked like he is gonna be competing again, but now it seems like it's not gonna happen. It wasn't only physique updates and stuff like that, but it was also uh, him taking photos with Dan Solomon. I mean, they had a lunch, they, they talked all night, stuff like that. So it really seemed like I was at least hoping that Phil Heath is actually gonna be coming back to the stage, but no, it seems like Phil Heath is actually retired at this point. Now, as far as Phil Heath as a commentator, he did a good job actually at Boston Pro. He was actually pretty good at analyzing the physiques while not putting the competitors down, like for example Sean Ray would do, but he wasn't only talking about good things, he was still breaking these competitors down, he was giving us their weaknesses as well, uh, some things that he was able to notice, maybe some of us wouldn't be able to, but still he was doing all this in positive manner, so he did a really good job, honestly. So overall, I think Phil Heath is a great candidate for this role, I think he's going to do this job properly. Still disappointed that this wasn't an announcement for his comeback at the Mr. Olympia stage, but still, it, it's good, he's a good commentator. Now, I'm curious what's gonna happen with Sean Ray. Fuad Abiyad replaced him at the Arnold Classic, and as you can see, Phil Heath is gonna be doing the Olympia. Maybe he's gonna be doing it with Sean Ray, maybe with somebody else, but I think the fans have spoken. So many people, so many fans do not want to listen to Sean Ray, and I think the Olympia people, Dan Solomon, Jake Wood, of course, I think they heard people's message, even though they don't want to fire Sean, as Dan said in one of those videos, they'll probably give him another position, something he is more suited for. As a commentator, he did a poor job, and I think Phil here is gonna do much better than Sean Ray. Now, as far as Fuad Abiyad, I mean, he did the Arnold Classic and he was very good, but as far as Mr. Olympia, even though I'm a big fan of Fuad, I would still love to hear Phil Heath talk, really. Maybe a combination, these two guys, both, Phil Heath and Fuad, that would be interesting. Whatever you guys think about Phil Heath commentating the Mr. Olympia and not competing, not this year, and most likely never again. Whatever your thoughts are on this, tell me in the comment section down below. If you guys are training really hard and you want to get your training to a higher level, I suggest to you Vintage Blast. It is a great pre-workout without too many crazy stimulants, but it's gonna give you more energy, more focus and an incredible pump. It also tastes amazing, there are so many flavors, you can choose your own. You're gonna find this in the description of this video, just click on the link and use the code EVEN for a 12% discount. Thank you guys. Alright, so let's move on. The next thing I wanted to talk about is this physique update of Branch Chan. So three years ago, this guy was a breakout star at the 2019 Mr. Olympia, where he was top 5. He took that 5th spot and he was only beaten by Chris Bumstead, Brion Ainsley, uh, Keon Pearson and George Peterson. And he was also very young and he had so much great potential, he looked amazing at that point. Unfortunately, we did not see him in 2020, in 2022, but we will see him this year and he looks amazing. His biggest weakness was his imbalance, his legs were too big for his upper body and I think he created even a bigger imbalance and it looks freaky, it looks pretty impressive, but it's not just his legs, he has an incredible physique, crazy muscle bellies. As far as conditioning, 
he's not super shredded. He says that he's holding some water because he just flew from China to Canada. I mean, that's a long flight, so he probably uh, he's holding some water. But still, you can see, I mean, yeah, he's a little bit watery, but he's not exactly super diced. Though, that's not an issue because he wasn't exactly shredded at the Mr. Olympia where he took fifth, but he has this sort of plastic look. Even when he's not completely diced, he still looks very hard, he still looks pretty conditioned, his fat distribution is very even, and he just has this crazy genetics, crazy tiny small waist, uh, he has that 3D round look. Maybe you guys have noticed, but uh, Asian guys are usually very good at men's physique, because they have those small, small waists, small, tiny joints, but this guy also has incredible legs, so he's a good fit for classic physique, and Ian Valier, who is, as you guys probably know, coaching the current reigning Mr. Olympia in classic physique, Chris Bumstead, yeah, they're brothers-in-law, but still, Ian is coaching him, he said on multiple occasions that he thinks Chen Kang is the biggest threat to Chris Bumstead, and he's coming back this year, and he's coming back strong. So I'm pretty sure he's gonna win one cooler pro, just like it's gonna be an easy win for Ian. I think it's gonna be an easy win for this guy right here, Chan Kang. I think he's going to win this and qualify for the Mr. Olympia. Now, as far as what can he do at the Mr. Olympia? Well, if he comes even more condition, I mean, he's okay lean, but he's not Chris Bumstead lean, not even close. And he can kind of get away with this because of his look, but if he actually came full and peeled, that would be really dangerous. And also if he can improve a little bit more, you know, grow his upper body a little bit and maybe downsize his legs a little bit more so he would look more classic. Maybe if he did only stairs as his cardio, maybe he would lose some of that quad mass and his quads would look super diced. But even if he doesn't do that, and he most likely won't do that, he likes to have one really dominant body part, and that's his legs. Even if he comes the way he is, he's going to be definitely a challenger for that top 5 spot. What do you guys think about uh, Chen Kang? Alright, the next story is about uh, blessing of Oribu and whether or not he's using Sintel in his <laughs> delts. So he posted this video here, and it looks ridiculous. Look at his shoulders, they are pointy, literally pointy. And it looks obvious, it looks so obvious, I'm sure anybody who watched this story noticed it. Now, did the blessing of Oribu somehow missed this? Wasn't he able to notice this? I don't think so, I don't think he's that self-unaware. Yeah, his back looks impressive, maybe that's why he really wanted to post it, but I'm pretty sure he was able to see what is going on here. And it looks disgusting, it looks horrible, it looks weird. And it's happening right after this whole thing uh, with Hardy. So it's definitely not a good thing for him, for his career. I honestly hope that this is just gear, that he's only injecting gear in his shoulders and he did too much. And I know this happens. I know people personally who are injecting all the gear in their shoulders and they have been told by the judges that they are using Sintel, actually. While they're not doing that, but they're just putting enough oil and so it looks like this. But I mean, now I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, not to this point. I don't think I ever saw something like this in person. Look at this. Look at this madness. It just looks horrible. Now I'm hoping, I'm honestly hoping that he's not trying to enhance his delts that much. And I don't think he's doing that because his delts are already fine. He was probably just using too much gear in his delts and they just look horrible, disgusting, weird. His fans should never be able to see something like this. Not on the stage, not when he's competing, not when he's guest posing, and not even on his social media. Nobody should see this. If it was a bad shot, just, a, just an infection, something like that, don't post videos for a while, man. What the hell are you doing? Why are you showing this to us? And if, he's, if he actually keeps doing this, he's going to end up having so much scar tissue that he's going to be showing this on stage and he's going to get marked down for this. So definitely not a good thing, whatever he's doing, he looks horrible with this, I just hope it's not permanent, and I hope he's not gonna keep doing this, I hope this is only temporary, and that it will go away, somehow it will go away, because if it doesn't, if he keeps doing whatever he's doing, and he keeps showing up like this on stage, he is ruined, he is known for having an aesthetic physique, and now after seeing this, 
I am personally a little bit disappointed, I don't know about you guys, but you can tell me in the comment section down below, whatever you think. Alright, next we have a physique update, yes, a physique update of Johnny O. Jackson, a training partner of Branch Warren. So I thought this guy retired, and he did, he stopped competing, but obviously he did not stop training really hard, you can see that on his social media, he's always posting his uh, training videos, and obviously he did not stop using uh, gear. So we have another of those cases where bodybuilders do retire, but they just still love bodybuilding too much that they don't want to compete because they know that they can't win or be in the top, but they still want to be as jacked as they possibly can. And, you know, it kind of looks like Johnny Jackson. He was such a hardcore trainer and, you know, he was training with Branch Warren. And Branch Warren is not much different today. He is still training very hard. He's obviously still also using gear. He's probably not all about training and all about eating like he was back in the day. But as you can see, he's still training hard and he still looks really good. You can see that he's still basically shredded. There are veins on his quads. There are separation on his crazy quads. That was his best body part. His upper body, as you can see, it's a little bit flatter, a little bit smaller. But his legs, <laughs> look at those freaking legs. Uh, you can see on the right leg that he lost some size in uh, lateralis, but the left one looks massive. I mean, overall, his legs, for somebody who has been retired for as long as Branch has been retired, his legs are looking really big, really massive, and he is conditioned. Look at the veins, and look at his arms also. I mean, he, he is a little bit smaller in the upper body, he kept more muscle in his legs, but still, he is jacked. So these two guys both were hardcore trainers and they are still hardcore even in retirement. What do I think about this? Should they be pushing their bodies at their age even after retiring? Well, I think it's their choice. It's their personal choice. They can do whatever makes them happy. I don't want to criticize them for doing this. Maybe it's not the healthiest thing, but if it makes them happy, it is what it is. I know it's really hard to reinvent yourself like Dorian Yates did, for example. He retired and he was depressed, he didn't know what to do with his life, so he basically reinvented himself, he became something that has nothing to do with bodybuilding, it's really tough to do that, not anybody can adapt as fast as Dorian did, and as you can see, Johnny and Branch both are having trouble with this. Whatever you guys think though, tell me in the comment section down below, like this video if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to check out the Old School Labs website, thank you guys for watching, all the best and bye bye.